For this next section on ring modulation, I'm going to go back to using the sine wave out of my disting. Because this pure sound with only one harmonic, a fundamental, let me turn off the Moog oscillator, raise up the cutoff, turn up the X input, and finally turn up the X mix level so it appears in the final output. An additional function the Ring SM has is if you have a nice symmetrical waveform like the sine wave, if you flick the double switch down and increase the ring modulator level so I can hear the sound processed through the ring mod, you start to get a sound that's basically doubled in pitch. The reason that's happening is that the way a ring modulator works is it takes the two waveforms in and multiplies them together. As a result, there are harmonics add and subtract from each other. If you take a sound with one harmonic and add it to itself, you get a doubled frequency. So there's a doubled frequency out of the ring modulator, and here's the original sine wave as well. I'll turn that off for now. Now, as I mentioned, ring modulators work by multiplying one waveform by another. So let's go ahead and bring a second waveform into here, namely the sawtooth from the Moog. So we can see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and patch it in through another input on our data. It's that pink colored wave and take that multiple output from the data and put it to the Y input on our ring modulator. You might have noticed there's also a Z input. This is just like the Y input, except for it enters the circuit at a different phase and therefore sometimes can have a slightly different sound. As I bring up the Y input, the X and Y inputs for the ring modulator will be multiplied together. you can see the resulting green waveform. And actually to show this a bit more clearly, because it is phase inverted right now, excuse me for a second while I take the output and run it through an inverter. And you can really see on the scope then how that pink waveform is having its level multiplied by the blue wave, the X and Y inputs, to result in the green wave. Now look at that intersection between the waves. There is some phase shifting going on, but in general, when they're both positive, the output's positive. When one's positive and one's negative, it flips polarity. So the sawtooth is flipping the polarity of that sine wave. Now let's do another trick. I'm going to turn the sine wave down one octave so that its frequency is now half that of the sawtooth. The sine wave has one fundamental tone to it. That harmonic is going to get added to and subtracted from the sawtooth output. So let's look at what the harmonics of the sawtooth by itself look like. I'll bring the Y up in the output, turn it back on again. Play it up an octave so you can see what's going on. Turn off the ring modulator for now. Here's our sawtooth wave with this fundamental harmonic right around 260 hertz. Pull that back out of the mix. Now I'm going to turn up the ring modulator that has a sine wave at half that frequency. So it should add to and subtract from that fundamental. And indeed, what we're seeing now is one harmonic at 129, just basically the 260 that was the original sawtooth minus the frequency of the sine wave, and also that harmonic plus the frequency of the sine wave. We're getting a little separation here in the harmonics. We can play around with balancing the relative levels. They're a little bit detuned right now. I'll try to get them a little closer. So that's one thing that ring modulators do is they play around with harmonics. What gets really interesting is when you start detuning one oscillator against another. I'm going to put the sine wave back up an octave so it's on the same frequency as my sawtooth. And then start detuning it. Now watch what happens to those harmonic spikes. They start splitting up into multiple spikes. Basically, we're seeing the sum and differences of these frequencies. And if I had these tuned, say, 10 hertz apart, we're going to see a separation in those spikes that corresponds to that, as well as a low spike down there at 10 hertz. Occasionally, you'll hit these pitches where everything's in alignment. Or harmonics add and subtract in a way where they add back together again. So a more complex sound. 
When these are detuned, sometimes they're also used for more clangorous type sounds. Turn on the filter cutoff. A little more bell or gong-like, particularly if you play some games and modulate the pitch or envelope the pitch of one so it rises or falls over the course of a note. But sometimes it can be fun just to create these thicker sounds by carefully tuning these oscillators against each other. That's getting closer to steel drum type sound. Now, as we've shown before, not all modules that have the same name sound the same. This particular design of a ring modulator is based on a transistor design, which has a slightly softer sound to it. Just for comparison, the distings do have ring modulators as well. Let's hear how different that sounds. I'm going to tune up a nice sound here. So that's what the Ring SM's ring modulator sounds like. I'm going to use mode 1B on my spare disting here. Plug in the X and Y inputs, quite literally, into the X and Y inputs on my disting, and then take the output from the A output, the normal output. A little tight down here, but there we go. Hear what a different spectrum that has to it, where it's a bit buzzier. Compared to the analog circuitry inside the Ring SM. Then the output. Not quite as in your face. So that's another very different type of sound modifier. Ring modulators, which used to be used quite a bit to create metallic sounds before we really got into things like frequency modulation. But also, this particular module has that bonus of that mixer and also a really nice sub-octave generator.